Right, so I'm going to begin this video slightly differently. I'm going to jump straight into a quote. And the quote is this. Diane Abbott is the first ever black woman to be elected as an MP whose dedication to equality continues to inspire us. The Labour Party owes Diane a great debt. Now you might figure in the wake of Diane Abbott's now five month long suspension from the Labour Party, this is the sort of thing you can imagine Jeremy Corbyn saying or John McDonnell saying or one of the other socialist campaign group of left wing Labour MPs saying. But this was actually Keir Starmer on June the 11th, 2020. Well, before he decided he'd found an excuse to eliminate her. Certainly, that is the position Diane Abbott herself has taken in a proper arse-kicking attack on Starmer, saying in no uncertain terms that he's trying to force her out. For five months, Abbott has been suspended over a reply to an article that had been written in The Observer titled Racism in Britain is not a black and white issue, it's far more complicated. Now, I've covered this incident more in depth in another video, which I'll link to, so I won't go over what was said again here, but fundamentally, an early draft of Abbott's reply had gone out instead of the final draft. And the one that went out was poorly written because it gave the impression that anti-black racism was a worse form of racism because it is based on obvious appearance, whereas those from racially abused demographics who might be white-skinned don't get that. An apology came out within hours from Abbott, dissociating herself completely from the reply that had gone out in her name, making clear the wrong draft had gone out. It didn't stop Starmer suspending her within hours likely skipping with glee at the opportunity she presented him with to rid himself of another MP not loyal to him. In fact, Abbott is likely the most vociferous public critic of Starmer within the Parliamentary Labour Party, showing more spine than anyone else she shares those benches with, operating under his authoritarianism, largely in fear, as most of them seem to be given the impression of. But the impression many of us will have had regarding this matter up until now was that she's been left in limbo for these past five months. But the truth appears to be a lot more sinister than that. And she's finally issued a response, an arse-kicking response. The whole thing is again linked to, so I'll just cover some of it here. The internal Labour Party disciplinary against me is fraudulent. I was told by the chief whip to actively engage with an investigation, but the Labour whips are no longer involved. It is now entirely run out of the Labour Party HQ, which reports to Keir Starmer, and there is no investigation. This is the same Keir Starmer who almost immediately pronounced my guilt publicly. This completely undermines any idea that there is fairness or natural justice. It is procedurally improper. To be clear, I immediately and unreservedly apologised for my letter. Others have committed graver offences and belatedly grudging apologies have been wrong from them, yet they have been immediately excused as supporters of this leadership. The Labour Party has not charged me with anti-Semitism because they know it is untrue. As someone who has fought against all forms of racism all my life, I would consider it a very serious allegation. Instead, it has been used to smear me, my reputation and decades of anti-racist work. Coming from the current leadership, it is hard to stomach. It is no secret that a large proportion of the racism that the Ford report uncovered was directed against me, including expressions of visceral disgust, drawing on racist tropes, and they bear little resemblance to the criticisms of white males elsewhere in the messages. I have never received an apology from the leader, the general secretary, or any of the perpetrators for that racism. I am not even aware of any of the culprits facing disciplinary measures, as I am now obliged to do. I have remained silent about this issue until now. This was in the hope that some sense of decency and recognition of the tenets of natural justice might prevail. The Labour Party disciplinary machine has clearly shown that it has little interest in either. I am the longest serving black MP, yet there is a widespread sentiment that as a black woman and someone on the left of the Labour Party, that I will not get a fair hearing from this leadership. That's a damning statement. There's a lot more of it too, so do follow the link and read the whole thing. And she is 100% right. And all the evidence is there, not just proving her right, but also indicating that this is a planned and concerted move to remove her. For one thing, Starmer did declare her guilt publicly, because he stood up and said a response which again, wasn't the finished version, was clearly anti-Semitic. Many Jewish people are, of course, white. It's also a disgrace that a disciplinary process has been completely undermined by the party leader, though given he seized control of the issue, that's no surprise. It is also further undermined by Abbott's own actions in the past. One example being that she led a campaign to get the then Labour government of Gordon Brown to accept Jewish refugees here escaping from Yemen. Of course, it is also true that a lot of Jewish people knew what Abbott was trying to say and didn't take it the way Starmer has painted it. Jewish Voice for Labour, for example, had tweeted out that 
Diane Abbott breaks her silence to tell about Labour's unfair treatment of her and their ruthless purge of her local party for attempting to discuss the implications of the conviction for paedophilia of a local Starmer supporting councillor. I'll come on to the councillor aspect in a moment. Regular viewers will be familiar with the story already, but it also lends itself to the truth of what is really going on here. It isn't just Jewish people defending Abbott for a published reply that was clumsy, and this was also reinforces her points made in the Ford report, because Martin Ford KC himself has also defended Abbott by saying that he clearly understood what Diane Abbott meant, and that was that the racism suffered by non-whites is as a result of their particular protected characteristic being very much more obvious, as well as completely irrational. And he's right, this really ought to be obvious to anyone, except those clearly intent on weaponizing this issue. There is also no getting away from where the Starmer regime has given racism a free pass. The most blatant example you can compare this to is the instance of Neil Coyle, the Labour MP for Bermondsey and Old Southwark, who made sinophobic comments towards a British Chinese journalist, Henry Dyer, in a Houses of Parliament bar. They were discussing the now debunked story of Labour MP Barry Gardner receiving money from a Chinese spy, with Coyle allegedly saying he was being paid by Fu Manchu. When Dyer pointed out this was a Chinese trope and inappropriate, Coyle responded by saying, from how you look like, you've been given renminbi to Barry Gardner, implying Dyer might also have been given Gardner money. Dyer left feeling uncomfortable, but wanting to make amends before he left, he waved Coyle goodbye, which earned him a two-fingered salute from the MP. It took Starmer four days to suspend Coyle, and he's been quietly readmitted to the party since. I would suggest what he did was significantly more offensive than Diane Abbott having the wrong draft of a statement sent to a paper and apologising for it swiftly afterwards. Starmer made no public comment on Coyle as he did Abbott. Evidently, sinophobia isn't as big a deal as anti-Semitism to him, but then, as I've said for ages, no other form of racism is. And the proof of that is the Labour Party complaints page itself, which has a bespoke anti-Semitism complaints option, but no other form of racism does, and they all have to be reported through general complaints. In fact, Labour MP Darren Jones got asked about this very comparison on Sky, and he said MPs shouldn't get involved in disciplinary matters. But the trouble is, it was Starmer who got directly involved with suspending Coyle and restoring the whip to him, and it was Starmer who acted to suspend Diane Abbott before any investigation could possibly begin. The difference in how a left-wing MP and a right-wing one being treated is stark. And whatever your personal views of Diane Abbott are, she's always been a loyal Labour Party member, she's always served her constituents well, which is why she has one of the largest majorities in the country, and is a staunch form of, a, opponent of all forms of racism, has a history to back that up, and so anyone pointing to the article and sneering when the mistake should be obvious should be ashamed of themselves. Also, if you think Starmer himself doesn't have an issue with race here, or women actually, you might like to know that Diane Abbott is actually the sixth woman of black or Asian heritage that Starmer has either sacked or removed the whip from since he became leader. Compare that with other examples, such as Labour MP Charlotte Nichols getting away with distributing anti-gypsy Roma and traveller election literature, Rachel Reeves extolling her admiration for notoriously anti-Semitic MP Nancy Astor, John Mann aggressively accosting Ken Livingstone in a stairwell, Barry Shearman's silver shekels comment to two Jewish businessmen, Peter Kyle referring to SNP leader Umza Yusuf as Mohammed, Rosie Duffield's ongoing turf behaviour, but hey, they're all white and right-wing, aren't they? But Diane Abbott is also right that this smacks of another effort to remove another left MP that Starmer doesn't want, because all he wants on his parliamentary benches are an army of loyal yes-men once he is in power, who won't dare not act as he commands. And I've covered numerous examples of the left being removed wherever the Starmer regime can manage it. Abbott's suspension has come alongside the London Labour takeover of Hackney North and Stoke Newington CLP, Diane Abbott CLP, on the basis of boundary changes, that's the excuse they're using, despite this CLP not changing by enough to warrant the imposition of a centralised Labour Party authority by the party's own rules going into the next election. So they're abusing their own rule book in doing this. And that happened back in July. And that's just a few months after Abbott was suspended. Another reason given for this, however, was that the incumbent CLP officers were asking awkward questions on the matter of safeguarding in the wake of the scandal involving convicted child pornographer and Labour hackney councillor Thomas Dewey. Now, Dewey was in the CLP of Abbott's neighbour, Meg Hillier. In fact, Dewey had been her election agent. But for the local executive and Abbott's constituency to be shut down and replaced, then, is therefore completely bizarre and can't be seen for anything other than a blatantly opportunistic power grab because now the left-wing executive, the Diane Abbott favourable executive, has been completely replaced 
by a right-wing one, killing off her chances of reselection fun fundamentally, even if she gets the whip back completely. Abbott has been the MP there since 1987. Is this really how she's going to be removed? Well, she certainly thinks so. She believes she has no hope of a fair hearing. And when she's saying Starmer has basically seized control himself of the situation, she's almost certainly right. Will she stand as an independent, perhaps? Starmer's done a Corbyn on her, keeping her in the party, suspended. But the longer a suspension goes on, with the right-wing in control of her CLP now, how much longer has she got before she is replaced? Based on what Starmer's already done, I think this is a foregone conclusion too. Clearly so does Diane Abbott. But what do you reckon? Should she run as an independent? Will she run? For my own part, I'd support her in doing so. Denying Starmer another seat that should be a safe win for his party, all because of his own petty factionalism, would be justice. Again, local members would, I'm sure, go out and campaign for their candidate, Diane, not Starmer's pick for them. It'll drive more people to leave the party. The Labour ground game would again be destroyed. For what? Everything Starmer is doing in Labour is for himself. It's not a party for the many. It's not even a party for the few. It's his Labour now. He always calls it that. My Labour, he calls it. It's for him and him alone now. And if you don't like it, he'll show you the door. Well, Diane Abbott stood in front of that door right now, I fancy. And whatever she decides to do here on, we should all be on her side. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation for you where you can get all the background detail on Abbott's letter and get the gist of where we're at now as a result. And I'll hopefully see you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.